Hello and welcome to Best of Tutorials. My name is Amar and in today's video I want to talk to you about email phishing. What is email phishing? How does this attack happen? And how to prevent it from happening? This video is part of cybersecurity videos that I'm recording for my clients. I also wanted to share them with the public to make sure that everybody is knowledgeable and not fall into this type of attack. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video if you find it helpful, and share it with your friends to make sure that nobody falls victim for this type of attack. I'll be sharing new videos in the near future, so make sure to hit that bell icon to get notified when I post new videos. If you have any questions, please always comment below and I will try my best to answer them. Thank you for watching and see you in another video. Thank you. Hello and welcome again. So I prepared this presentation to explain what a phishing attack means and how to avoid them. Uh, as I said in my previous video, this is uh, recorded for my clients as well. So that's why you see my company logo uh, at the top. If you want this presentation, I'll email it to my clients, but if you need it also comment in the section below and I will send it to you as well. So first of all, what is the phishing attack means? Phishing attacks, it's a type of social engineering uh, used to steal user data, uh, logins, information, things like that. So phishing email messages, websites, and telephone calls are designed to steal money or sensitive information. Cyber criminals also do this by installing malicious software on your computer, tricking you into giving them sensitive information uh, or stealing personal information off your computer. There are multiple types of phishing attacks. We'll go through the uh, most important ones of, of them. Social engineering, for example, on your Facebook profile, LinkedIn, uh, and other social media, we can find your name, possibly date of birth, your location, where you work, um, some of your interests and hobbies, skills, maybe your relationship and status, telephone number, email addresses, favorite food, cat pictures, all these information are, are there. There's everything that cyber criminal need in order to fool, to fool you into thinking that the message or email is legit. For example, someone can try to fake a, a Facebook account that is same information as your friend and send you a request and when you accept it, they start chatting with you. It's fake. Anyways, uh, next to the, to the next one, link manipulation. This method um, of phishing use some form of deception designed to make a link in an email appear to belong to a spoofed organization uh, or person. Sometimes it's misspelled, uh, the, the link is misspelled, which we will see uh, some examples uh, in the next couple uh, slides here, or the use of subdomains or common tricks used by the phisher. So that's why it's important to look at the links clearly. Many email clients or web browsers will show preview of where a link will take a user uh, in the bottom left of the screen while hovering uh, on it, which we will see in the screenshots. The next one is a spear phishing. Phishing attempts directed at a specific individual or companies. This has been this is this have been the term spear fish uh, phishing. Attackers may gather information, personal information, social engineering about their target and increase their probability of success. Basically, this technique is by far the most successful one on the internet today. Uh, it's about 90%, 91% of the attacks. 
And the next one we have is the clone phishing, a type of phishing attack whereby a legit and previously delivered email containing an attachment or link has had its content and recipient addresses taken and used to create an almost identical cloned email. The attachment or link within the email is replaced with a malicious version and sent from an email address spoofed to appear to come from original sender. For example, someone might spoof my email and send it to one of my uh, employee asking them for a visa card or something like that or send it to one of my clients asking them for their password, just as an example. Another one is voice phishing. Voice phishing is a criminal practice of using social engineering over the telephone system to gain access to personal and financial information from the public for the purpose of financial reward. Of course, everything has some reward. It could be not reward only, but to gain access to personal information. Sometimes referred as vishing, the V's for the voice. Voice phishing is typically used to steal credit card numbers or other information used to identify theft scheme and vigils. Okay, so here we have some, some type of attacks. I'll explain things here as we go. So here we have the from, uh, so we removed it, and then here we have the to, and then we have the subject. And then here we have the text and the email. And then we have a link. So number one, the first question you always have to ask, do I know this person? Why would this person email you? Are you expecting an email from this person? If you answer no, you probably need to look harder for the next ones. If yes, you also need to look hard, but you probably know that person. The second one, large, amount of phishing emails will blank out the two. So usually they don't send it to two or CC, they usually BCC. So you don't see who is getting this email. Uh, what you cannot see is a mass email. So instead of they send it individually, they send it to multiple users, multiple emails. That's why they BCC everybody. Number three, Phishing emails will often come with a subject that are in all capital or have multiple uh, marks in order to for you to think that the email is important. So for example, here it's administrator and it's all caps. That means, hey, it's important, open me. Number four, here. This is a targeted email, spare phishing, to someone specific. So more than likely, this was sent to everyone in the organization that the sender had in their address book. So it's sending it to everybody. And then number five, if you hover over this click here, sometimes links, when you hover on them, before you click, don't click, just hover on them. You'll see that it's not taking you to your domain. For example, if your company name is uh, XYZ, uh, corporation.com and this is taking you to this fake website it's definitely not yours so be careful for this it's a malicious website okay this is another example here so we have from and we have the subject notice that the two and the CC is also empty and in the content here we have a link so, in the sender here, you can see that it is not from email as displayed. It says it's from service, but then it's different. It's not a legit email since it's talking about this user. It's talking about this type of service, but it's coming from another email. So usually what they do is they use someone's hacked email to spam others. Number two here, we have the subject. So on the subject, we see that the two, two and the CC are also grayed out. 
so you can't see who is sent to. And then you will see that the reference subject line is the upgrade. This is targeted attack to this VSU email addresses. Now when we look at the link here, the link is not part of the domain. So if this was some sort of uh, upgrade for a university or whatever the VSU is, it should be that domain. It should not be something like this Jimbo here. It's probably a free website or something. Okay, this is another example. This is a clone, a clone phishing. So it looks like someone got hauled off this copy of uh, eBay and then they modified it. So here we see from, we see to, and then we see some link here and when we hover on it, it it's fake. Anyway, so these emails are harder to, to spot because they look exactly like a legit email. The first, it's not right email, the sender, it's a generic address and this can be faked. So this, usually you will see some a username when someone emails you from eBay, but anyway, let's assume that you don't know. Let's go to the next one. The question you have to ask, did I buy anything from eBay recently? And if I did, is it what I purchased? So are they talking about this thing that you purchased or something else that you're not aware of? Because it could be fake. And then the third most, which is the most important here, is when you hover your mouse over this respond now, you will see that it is fake. Website is not ebay.com or .ca. It's taking you to this uh, IP and it's fake page. And probably when you click on it, it's it will look exactly like eBay website, but it is fake website. It will ask you to put your credentials. Once you put them, boom, you will go to the real eBay page. However, the attacker took a copy of your username and password. Okay, next one here. Another one from PayPal. So here, we have number one, number two, and where's number three here? And here's number three. So in the previous example, the email looked like it's a legit one from PayPal. However, if you look, it's coming to uh, if you recognize the email or not. Do you recognize this email or not? Look here, why would someone do this? The second, is it something you bought? Oh, sorry, I can't find it. And then look at the email circled here. If it was an official email from PayPal, it would end with at PayPal. Dot com. So this is definitely fake. Okay, another example here. This is a, a different example for link manipulation. So again, you see we have one, the email address. Two is the, uh, the date and the subject here. And then it will tell you things here. So let's explain it. So this is typically from a valid email address. You have to ask whether or not from someone you know or someone that you're expecting an email from. Now, remember, they are telling you update your email account. It's only your IT provider who should do this for you. So usually we have access and we don't need to even ask you, we just do it for you. So why would someone do this unless it's fake? And then cyber criminal will use the subject trying to get your attention. So again, update your account, email account, all caps, and they're like scare you. Hey, do it now. And if you see that two and the CC are not shown because they BCC'd everybody. And then when you go on number four here, if you hover on the click here, it's taking you to this 
French website. It's probably a fake page. When you put your credentials, they will be copied to the attacker. And then the signature often will end with a generic sign off. Usually, for example, if I'm emailing one of my clients, they have problem, it will show my proper signature, not just web administrator. Here's another one. Number one, number two, number three. So the sender is not a legit internal address. Usually the email will come from your own server. So for example, if your domain is mydomain.com, it should come with, with that. But here it's coming from a fake email address. And also it's something generic like admin team. And the subject line, it's all capital, verification, and it has exclamation mark trying to get your attention. Hey, do it now. And then again, the click again here, when you hover on it, it's taking you to this fake uh, website with some uh, with, a, with a port and then it's doing some, some sort of something there. Track your email or something. Next one here. We have one, two, and three. Again, same thing here. So this looks completely legit. The name, this is the Verizon Wireless. But if you look at the actual email, the, the domain here is not verizon.com. Number two here. The two line is missing, indicating that this is a mass email that they want to avoid you seeing. They just sent it to thousands of people. Number three, hovering on your mouse over the link here, it shows that this website is not the Verizon website and it's fake page. Okay, this is uh, social engineering here. So the example on the left here, targeted social engineering, cyber criminal scan your profile for your likes and then send you a crafted message over social media trying to trick you into clicking the link which would then steal your social media login and take over your profile sending out more phishing attacks to your friends and contact list usually this happens when you click on something if you probably are aware of these these days everybody knows them someone clicks on an email or, or click on a link on, on a game or something on Facebook and boom, all their friends get, get a message. And anybody from their friends click on that message, all their friends are also getting this message. The one on the right is an example of mass phishing attack through social media. Don't doubt that many of you have seen these on Facebook from random people in messages or from your friends through the timeline. Upon clicking the link, yeah. And notice that it has some fake URL here. Now here is some examples here that uh, you can stop and you can look by yourself to guess if this was correct or not correct. And you can always uh, contact us to to see if you got them correct or not correct. Okay, here's another one. So here we can say that the email address is not valid internal email address for sure. You can see here it doesn't belong to mydomain.com for example. Number two here, the two NCC are missing, they're gone here. And then you see here the subject line is caps, 
trying to take your attention. And then if you hover over the link, it's all fake, fake website. Okay, another word here. Okay, let's take a look at it. So first of all, first thing to ask yourself, do I know this person and why they are emailing me? The second, you can see that two and the CC are not showing. So now we will be able to tell it's a mass email. And if you have her on the, on the link here, you can see it's fake, does not belong to your, uh, to mydomain.com. And then the signature is very generic signature, webmail administrator. Tips to protect yourself from phishing emails. Usually phishing emails, IT people never ask you for your password because they are the ones that created it for you. If they need your password, they can reset it for you. Okay, sometimes we do ask for passwords when we're testing things, but you know what we're doing because you have a problem and you requested that from us. So we ask you that. So you already know that we are going to ask you for it. If we just come and ask you, it's probably fake. It's not us. We never do that. I don't think there's any IT company do that. We don't ask you for, so never send passwords bank numbers, or any private information in email. Be cautious about opening attachments, downloading files from email, regardless of who sent it from. Could be coming from your boss, but could be fake. Anybody can fake and spoof an email these days. Those files can contain viruses or other malware that can weaken your computer security. If you're not expecting an email with an attachment from someone, such as fax or PDF, call and ask them if they indeed sent the email. If not, then let them know that they are sending out phishing emails and they need to change their email password immediately. Now, this is correct if the email that I was sending is the actual email. If it was a spoofed email, it's not these people do it, that are sending, it's someone else trying to uh, manipulate their email address to tricking other people. Never enter private or personal information into a pop-up window. Or a pop-up, win yeah, a pop-up window. Could be just fake page that looks very legit, but if you t take a look at the top URL closely, it will be fake. When you put your email and password, you'll be taken to the correct website after and you'll log in and you'll know nothing. It's everything is legit. But what happened behind the scenes is that attacker got a copy of your username and password. And always look for the HTTPS lock. Most of the website these days have HTTPS, that's encryption, and it has the lock bar beside them as well for the private information on, on a website. And then always look for spelling and bad grammar. Cyber criminals are not known for their grammar spelling, although they can install a Grammarly and do that. But professional companies or organizations usually have staff that will not allow a mass email like, uh, like to go out to users. If you notice mistakes in an email, it might be a scam. So we do limit how many emails can be sent from one user at a time. So if we get a mass email from a user, we know that something is wrong. What to do when you think you received a phishing email? First, and this is very important, do not click on any link within the email or download any attachment. You can always forward the email if you're one of our clients. You can always email us at the email here for the information and we will examine it and tell you if it's good or not. 
If there's an attachment in the email and you recognize the sender but aren't expecting attachment from them, call them and ask if this was a legit email. Signs of phishing for uh, in a phone call. You have been specifically selected. You will get a free bonus if you buy our product. You have one of five valuable prices. You have won a big money in a foreign lottery. This investment is low risk and provides higher return than you can get elsewhere. You have to make your mind right away. You trust me. You don't need, you don't need to check our company with anyone. We will just put the shipping and handling charges on your credit card. All these I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with, but it's a fake. So don't buy from unfamiliar company. Legit companies, businesses understand that you want more information about their company and they will be happy to comply with you. Always check out and familiar companies with your local consumer protection agency, chamber, uh, better business bureau, state attorney, general, national fraud information. Just Google them, find out who are they. Obtain a salesperson name, business identity, telephone number, street address, mailing address, and business license before you uh, transact business. Don't pay for a free price. If a caller tells you the payment is for taxes, he or she is violating the federal law. Never send money or give out personal information such as credit card numbers and expiration dates, bank accounts, date of birth, social security numbers to unfamiliar companies or unknown person. What to do if you think you're receiving a phishing call? Always look at the phone number in Google. Oftentimes, others have received these calls before and will log the number and type a scam different websites. Some websites are 800 notes, callercenter.com, and other websites. Now, this can be faked with today's in today's world anybody can fake any number in fact if you want me to show you in the future how to fake a number I can do that resist pressure to make decision immediately keep your credit card checking account or social security number to yourself don't tell them to call the caller you don't know even if they ask you to confirm information that's a trick. Get all information in writing before you agree to buy. Be aware of offers to help you recover money that you have already lost. Call her that they say they are law enforcement officers who will help you to get your money back for a fee are scammers. I'm pretty sure everybody these days they get the CRI calling them here in Canada. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video and share it with your friends. I hope this video was useful. I will post more videos in the near future. Thank you.